A lot of people ask me how I go about compositing my 2D animated shots, from backgrounds to adding the animation, and to post-processing my effects. In this video, I'll talk about some quick tips that I usually go to every time I composite my own animation. Hey guys, it's Tidi Kupatoa, and today I just like to share some basic tips about compositing your 2D animation using Adobe After Effects. All the custom animation I've done over the years, ranging from short films to proof of concepts to some commissions here and there, I use After Effects to polish my poo poo. With After Effects, everything just looks finished, everything is shiny, there's textures, there's lighting effects. There's all these other effects. There's color grading. I'm going to be talking about how I combine my animation with background work and so on and so forth. Again, this is not necessarily a tutorial video, it's more about me sharing some quick tips. First of all, you're gonna wanna import your 2D animation to a right format. Whatever animation program you're using, you could export it into an image sequence, an alpha channel movie. There's a lot of different formats that you could use and that Adobe After Effects accepts. For example, if you use Flash or Adobe Animate, since After Effects and Animate are under the Adobe Cloud, you can actually just import the work file of the animate file and it actually imports everything as is, including if that flash file had separate layers. Speaking of separate layers, you could choose to export the line art and the color separately in case you want to add specific effects to each of those layers in After Effects, but usually I just import my animation with both the line art and the colors. If you're choosing to export it in an image sequence, make sure it has the transparency options. So when you export that from your animation program, be sure to turn that on. Image sequence files that have transparency options are files like PNG, TIFFs, TGAs, and it'll render each file as a different drawing or different frame. Next is actually creating a new composition, and this is where you put everything together in a video format. And you want to make sure the aspect ratio, the size, the frame rate is going to be the final output of your video. So for this example, I'm using a 1920 by 1080 pixel standard HD ratio with a frame rate of 24. Since that's what my animation is, you want to make sure your After Effects file or composition matches the frame rate of your animation, or it's going to feel a bit jumpy, it's going to skip some frames, and the timing's not going to feel right. Then you can start putting in your files. You can just click the files from your finder window or your explorer window and just drag them into After Effects and it'll automatically import those files into the project tab. For importing animation though, you wanna do that differently. You wanna do that through the import file window because when you actually select an image from your image sequence, it's going to ask you if you want to import it as an image sequence rather than just an independent file. After Effects will import it, treating it as a video file. Now you can slap all those files together. So you can actually drag the files into the composition window or the timeline layer. You can always change the order in the timeline window later on. If you have background elements like foregrounds that have a transparency option, put those in, just play around with it. Make sure everything is snug and fit. This is also where you can actually finally add your character in the scene and make sure it fits well and comfortable with your scene. Maybe it's under some foreground elements, for example. Make sure it's in the right layer order, the way that you want it to be. And from here, you pretty much already have your character and your backgrounds mended together. And then when you play your animation, you're gonna notice that the timing's off. Maybe it feels a bit too fast. That's because in most cases, by default, After Effects import image sequences as 30 frames per second, and we want it to be in 24 frames per second. If you just right click that file, interpret footage, you can actually force that to happen. Change that frame rate from 30 to 24 instantly. Also, this window is pretty useful if you just wanted to loop your animation. So for example, a dancing animation where the animation's only like three seconds, but the whole video is about 10 seconds, and you just want that character to dance throughout. Dancing for the rest of the length of the footage. Now that we have our assets in the composition now, we can actually start adding movement in the backgrounds, whether it's rotation, transformation, scale. You can actually set a key for each of those independently. You do this through the timeline layers, you can actually look at the transform tab and actually set keys to each of those, whether it's position, scale, opacity. You have the freedom to just focus on one or the other. So this can be great. So in case that you had a character growing but it's shaking at the same time, you could have many keys in the position line, but for the scale, it could just be two keys from big to small. This is how I also do most of my camera moves. They're all just 2D hacks. Well, that's basically it, adding a character and a background together. Now, I realized I forgot to import other things like the secondary character and some 2D animation effects that I added because they're going to have their own effects. So I'm just gonna quickly import them like the way I did, make sure they all match 24 frames per second, make sure they're all image sequences, and make sure they're all in different layers when I slap them together in the composition window. Now that looks a bit right. Now we have our secondary character and we have some 2D animation effects that I animated, and now they're all together. And hey, this could pass off as a finished look. 
you've combined everything together. Now let's talk about things you can do with After Effects. Why I call this stage essentially polishing your poo poo. All right, now we're going to start adding in elements that make After Effects special. So I'm going to add some quick lighting effects. And this is something that I do a lot. So in your timeline, I would right click your animation layer and then look for layer styles and hit inner shadow. And this is something that I use almost all the time. So if you look at your timeline, you're going to see a new tab called layer styles. Click on that, click down, select inner shadow. And then from here, you can adjust the setting, the blend mode, the angles, the distance, play around with it. And what it is, is it basically adds an inner shadow effect to your character. But I usually use this effect for lighting effects like rim lights or over the head lights. So instead of making the blend mode multiply or something like that, I would change it to something that's more additive like linear dodge, color dodge, screen, brighten. And then I would give it a certain color that I want it to represent that rim lighting effect. And guess what? Any effect or any option that has sort of values or scales that you can adjust, you can actually keyframe them throughout the timeline of the video. So let's say you wanted the effect to change color throughout the time, or maybe the, the lighting effect, for example, or the shadow effect gets blurrier or it spreads out more as it progresses more into the video. Something like this could be useful, let's say, if you have a character walking through a corridor and let's say the character passes through a doorway that's brightly lit. You can adjust those effects so the light gets stronger on the character as they pass through this door. All right, now I want to talk about the pre-comp option because this is where things start to get layered. So the only caveat with these layer styles is that you can only have one of each kind. So you can have like an inner shadow and an inner glow, but you can't have two inner shadows at the same time on the same layer. So now let's talk about the pre-compose option. So you select your layers that you want to deal with. You go to layer and then you hit pre-compose. Now there'll be two options. I usually choose the top one. The bottom one will also attach the layer styles that you gave earlier, which you don't want. It'll also bring in keyframes if you, let's say, animate the character moving around the place. And I don't want that either. So then it's going to make the character its own composition. So when you double click on that layer or that character, now it opens a new window, treating it as a separate composition. Anything you add to this composition will show up in the main composition because that composition is inside that main composition. So let's try it here. So let's say we go to our character's composition and we add an inner shadow that's more of a shade and we soften it so it feels like a soft gradual shade. I give it an overlay blend mode and then we go back to our main composition and then we add another inner shadow with the rim light effect. So this time it's the opposite. We add an additive blending mode, we add a color, and now we have a rim light on top of our shading. So it just gives it a more stylized shading and lighting effect without having to hand draw everything. And again, you can set keys to these effects. So let's say you want to have the lighting effect move around the character or have it change throughout time. You can actually key those in and it's going to show up in the main composition. It's one of those things where you can endlessly experiment with it. Now, do you see those laser effects that's happening in the background right now? What if I wanted to add some gradual glow to it without affecting everything else? So I'm going to duplicate my effects and then I'm going to add a blend mode to it. So I'm going to use color dodge because it's very bright and sharp. I would say experiment with all these different blend modes to see what works best for your scene. Then I would add an effect on this layer. So maybe a quick blur effect or a Gaussian blur or fast box blur. And this is just so that we have that improvised glow effect on this effect. All right, now let's try doing that to the other character too. Basically the same stuff. We add some layer styles, we pre-compose it, we add layer styles within that pre-composition, maybe animate it, I don't know. And then just keep going back and forth between that character's composition and the main composition with everything all together. Another great thing to know in After Effects is the whole preserving transparency option. So I'm going to go back to the composition with just the character and I'm going to add the effects animation on top of it with the laser lights. Now, what if I want it so that the laser lights do not leave the silhouette of the character? If you look at your layer, there's a little T on the top and each layer has its own little tick box. Ticking it will show a checkered box. Now I'm going to do this on the layer with the laser effects. Actual composition, the laser doesn't leave the silhouette of our character now. If you hand animated lighting effects that are just big blotches, you can mask it to this character using this option so it doesn't clip outside. This sort of function is useful if you want to add animated textures on top of your character. So let's say you wanted to add a paper texture on top of the character and not to leave the silhouette of our characters. This is how you do it. 
And so now when I get to my main composition, that effect will be masked to the character this time, while having that character mixed along with our backgrounds and other effects. Alright, now let's say that you already have your finished scene, right? But let's say you want to do some color grading, maybe add some contrast here and there, maybe give it more a different hue, adjust the levels and all, there's a way you can do that without having to go to each of these layers and applying a color effect every time. So if you go to layer and then go to new, create a new adjustment layer, and you're going to notice that you're not going to see anything. Even when you have the layer selected and you can technically move it around, it appears that there's nothing on it and nothing really happens when you do move it around. However, this changes when you start adding effects onto the adjustment layer itself. Let's say I want to emphasize the blacks in the shot and make those stronger. So once I've added that specific color adjust effect, and when I start playing around with the scales, notice how it starts affecting everything underneath that adjustment layer. So again, you can use this to add more contrast, the brightness, adjust the levels. By just using the adjustment layer and not having to select each independent layer in the shot, and then having to color adjust each of those individually. Personally, I like to make several different adjustment layers if they each have a specific effect or purpose. With that said, I'm going to make another adjustment layer just so that I can add a bit more atmosphere. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer, but this time I'm going to change the blend mode to something like Lighten. And then I'm going to add a Gaussian or a fast box blur on top of it, crank it up, but then crank down the opacity. And notice how my scene starts to feel a bit more humid. So yeah, you can totally use blending modes to affect the overall shot. I would say keep playing with different blend modes to sort of play around with different effects for your shot. What works best for your shot, what adds to the shot, or what doesn't at all. Find the thing that works for you. At this point, I would start experimenting with different effects that you can find in Adobe After Effects. So when I was just playing around, I found a filter called CC Lens, and I basically just added it to the background and played around with settings so there'd be a bit of distortion. So when I actually animated and keyframed some of the distortion and the levels of it, it gave sort of a fake 3D effect, even though the image itself was just a strictly 2D thing. I would suggest just playing around with different effects and see what you can come up with. And eventually you'll start coming up with your own ideas and how you can be more creative in later shots. Another thing I tend to do a lot is sort of this visual mixing and making sure everything is balanced out. Adding effects to everything in the scene might make the scene look too noisy and just too busy. Usually when this happens, I start to subdue the backgrounds even more. So you could subdue the backgrounds with turning down the contrast or maybe blurring the background a bit so there's less contrast in the background information, but that makes the focal point on the characters because that's where the visual contrast and the accents are at. That's our focal point. One thing I do a lot is I duplicate the background file, I blur it, and I turn down the opacity so it doesn't end up too blurry, you can still make out some of the background elements. And this can be supported if you choose the right blending modes like Lighten. So yeah, when you're compositing your shot, just make sure you know what the focal point is. And if you feel like it's getting too busy, subdue one or the other. Oh, by the way, this is a reminder that you can pre-comp a pre-comp a pre-comp a pre-comp, meaning that if I want to make a pre-composition of my layers within the character's pre-composition, I can do that. And I can keep going and add more layer effects if I wanted to do that. Also, I want to show you guys another way how I apply shadows and lighting through pre-comps and preserving transparency. So instead of adding inner shadows through the layer effects, sometimes I would duplicate the current image or the current animation, and I would just turn this into a completely different solid color. So what I would do is turn down the contrast, the brightness, all the way to black, add some hue and saturation, maybe lighten it, and then colorize it with a different color tone. So for example, I could use a dark brown for here. I would set it to overlay so it kind of has this nice warm shadowy shade to it and then I would move around the shape while having that preserved transparency turned on so it doesn't leave the character's silhouette. I added a green rim light within this pre-comp so when I go back into the main composition I can have another layer effect play on top of it. So now we have a bunch of different things happening to our main character here. And this is why something like this can take hours of just playing around, experimenting, fooling around, just polishing that lovely, lovely turd. Look, over here I'm playing with another adjustment layer where I'm adding things like stylized effects, like glow, just to give the brightest elements in my scene just a bit more radiance to it. Okay, what if I just want to create a quick vignette option? You know, those darkened fades at the edges of the screen. And this was something that we did all the time when we were still at school. So what you want to do is go to layer, you go to new, and you hit solid. And from here, you can choose whatever color you want. I'm just going to choose a sort of like dark value of whatever color, maybe a dark purple. And it's going to create a shape that pretty much covers the whole frame. 
So what I need to do is create a shape that creates a mask on the shape. If you go to the bar where there's the pen tool, the rectangle tool, you're going to want to adjust it so you can actually create an ellipse from it. And with the layer that has the solid shape selected, just drag that shape across. And what you'll see is that it creates a mask of that solid shape. Now, if you look at your layer, you're gonna see a tick box that says inverted. You wanna hit that and it's going to invert where that mask is being applied. I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply because I want things to darken around this area. And if you look at the mask properties within the layer, you can actually adjust things like the mask feather. And this is what we're going to use. So I'm going to crank up the mask feather and it's going to create sort of this fade effect, this gradient, basically blurring out the mask. You can actually adjust the points of the shape in real time. So if I wanted to change the shape so it's not just an ellipse, I can actually select the mask and adjust those points while having the mouse tool selected and then just clicking and dragging those parts. And again, just a reminder, anything where you can change value and things like that, or you can manipulate positions and things like that, that can be keyframable. So let's say I wanted to start with a certain shape, but then I want that shape to change as well as the mask feather spreading around more. So it'll come from sharp shapes to a really soft, blurred out shape. I just need to key in a way that makes it does that. Oh, this lighting effect that I'm having in the background, it's basically the same thing. It's a solid shape, but instead of a darken, it's something like a light blue with a lighten blend mode. But I've masked it out, I've animated those mask paths, I've played around with the mask feathering. It's basically the same thing, but used for a different purpose. Alright, so I'm just going to spend some time just experimenting, just playing around, just adjusting things. I've also added some effects animation that I did in some other shots and some other projects and just slapped it on just to make the scene look a bit more busy. And you can spend endless hours just experimenting, seeing what's best for it and then seeing, oh, what if I did it this way or experimenting with different effects and, you know, getting something different in return. One of the reasons why this is also my favorite part of the animation process is seeing the fruition of all the work that you've put into backgrounds, into animation into effects now being put together in a single shot. So yeah, that was my first entry to these quick tips for After Effects, for 2D animation, compositing. Next time I'd like to talk about parenting, null objects, time remapping. And if there's anything else animation related and After Effects related that you want me to talk about, please talk about it in the comments down below. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.